Hi, I'm Dr. Jared Gardner, and today we are going to be reviewing this book right here, Diagnosis of Cutaneous Lymphoid Infiltrates by Dr. Antonio Subtil. This is a fantastic book, and I first um, heard Dr. Subtil speak at the American Society of Dermatopathology meeting uh, last year in 2018. And he gave this really amazing talk about cutaneous uh, lymphomas and lymphoid infiltrates and how to diagnose them. Now, it's no secret that I do not love heme path. And I've got a lot of great friends in pathology who are wonderful hematopathologists, and I deeply respect the work they do. But I find lymphoid things so challenging and frustrating for many reasons. And um, I, even in the skin, I still think that they're hard. So when I heard um, Dr. Subtil's lecture, I thought it was like the heavens opened up and I heard a choir of angels singing. I thought, this is it. There, I actually might be able to understand these things once, um, after all, with, um, with this kind of teaching because it was so practical and straightforward. And he had these great visual um, uh, diagrams and figures that really explained what you should be looking for to sort out all these different low-grade B cell lymphomas and other things in um, cutaneous hematopathology. So um, after his talk, I went up and told him, I said, this is amazing. Your talk was fantastic. And he mentioned that he had a book coming out and that a lot of the figures in his lecture were from his book. And I said, well, will you please send me a copy when it comes out? I'd love to review it. And so I uh, recently, this arrived in the mail, and um, I thank you very much, uh, Dr. Subtil and Springer, for donating this copy um, to my department's Dermpath Library. I, I don't keep these books personally for myself. Um, when they're donated to me, I give my best unbiased and fair review, and then I donate it to my university's um, uh, Dermpath Library in our department so my, my residents and fellows can use it. Um, I will tell you that this is a book I've already opened up multiple times at the microscope um, when we're looking at heme path cases that are difficult and we see quite a few of them in our practice um, here and um, it's been great and I will show you now um, uh, some pictures of inside the book that Dr. Subtil um, kindly uh, gave me copies of digitally to show you um, and, and give you some ideas of the tables, the figures, the images, all the stuff in here that really make this book so practical and useful. And um, it's now my go-to book for any time I see something that's hematopathology related in the skin. This is the book that I pick up and go to. So uh, let's take a look inside the book. Okay, let's take a look inside here and see what this book has to offer. Here's the table of contents. Um, obviously, you're going to start with the basics, and I really like the way that the book handles the basics. It talks about what lymphocytes actually look like morphologically, the different types of lymphocytes at a cytologic level, uh, lymphoid follicles and how they're composed, how to tell reactive and neoplastic apart, really great stuff. Then, instead of jumping right into the different entities, the different diseases, um, Dr. Subtil goes through the histomorphology differential diagnosis. So basically, if there's epidermotropism, here are a list of benign things and here's a list of malignant things that you can consider in the differential for epidermotropism. For diseases with ulceration, perifollicular accentuation, lots of EOs, lymphoid follicles, angiocentrism, paniculitis involvement, uh, or paniculitis-like pattern, all of these things, he gives a very robust and rich um, a differential diagnosis list, which I find really great. I actually, again, I've been doing a derm path for quite some time now, uh, but uh, reading through, just just flipping through the book at first, before I really delved into it, I was amazed at how many things I was like, wow, I didn't realize that should be on the differential for that. New things that I was learning, um, uh, particularly about differential diagnoses, and I think that's so valuable because sometimes it's hard when we just don't think of what other things could look like this. It's easy to miss stuff if we're not thinking about that, and this book really helps in that way. Um, and then after going through that differential, there's a discussion of different specialized techniques and immunostains and basic panels, and then the different um, uh, individual entities, you know, mycosis fungoides classic type, folliculotropic MF, pagetoid reticulosis. It really breaks down each subtype um, into kind of its own category because many of the subtypes have different clinical um, and um, histologic features. And then the book breaks it down and uh, gives this level of detail about each disease. So I really like the layout and the format of the book. 
Um, here's an example from the basics portion. Um, you know, skin is, uh, lymphomas in skin and, and lymphoid infiltrates in skin are particularly complicated uh, because there are so many different uh, anatomic structures or microscopic structures in the skin, right? There's epidermis, hair follicles, there's the dermis, there's the subcutis, and the way that the infiltrate involves or does not involve all of those structures plays a huge role. So this is this awesome checklist here of, you know, here's the things you should look for in the epidermis in the dermis, in the follicles, in the fat, in the vessels, in the sweat glands. And you can see a closer view over here on the right. It's really great because it just helps you, especially uh, at the beginner level as you're learning, it helps you to remember what things to look for and not forget. Um, also, I thought this was actually one of the things that stood out to me um, in Dr. Subtil's lecture at ASDP last year is he showed these, you know, this is what cleaved cells and mean, and this is centrocytes. These are what non-cleaved centroblasts look like. Here's, um, you know, how you can tell it's an immunoblast. And these are things that I know are basics that you probably learn in residency, but somehow I just never quite grasp this. Um, even though these are basic, I really love that not only are there pictures here, uh, but there are nice diagrams showing the concept of what these what these things mean and then how they um, are distributed in a normal lymphoid follicle. And uh, here's a, the discussion of telling apart um, reactive follicles, you know, in which the, the centrocytes and centroblasts are kind of like in a fishbowl. They're in the, the germinal center where the dendritic meshwork is, and they don't spill beyond it, whereas you would see that happening here in a follicular lymphoma. And then here's a closer look showing, you know, reactive follicles and how their staining uh, looks versus uh, neoplastic follicles in a uh, cutaneous follicle center lymphoma over here on the right. Really beautiful, crisp, high quality photos and tons of photos throughout the book. So I, I love pictures and I'm a real um, stickler for good quality in pictures. I'm very nitpicky about that when I take my own pictures and use them in my books and papers. And I love when I see other authors take that same level of, um, of care in creating really beautiful, high quality images. And uh, it's clear that Dr. Subtil has put in a bunch of time and effort in making the pictures and the figures for this book uh, look beautiful. So very nice to have uh, so many immunostains demonstrated and shown side by side with each other and with the H&E uh, findings. The other thing I like is that when you get into the different diseases, each chapter um, for each disease starts with, you know, here's subcutaneous paniculitis like T-cell lymphoma, alpha beta. Here's a, a diagram anatomically showing the sites where it most commonly occurs in the extremities. And then here's a list of kind of key facts. And I love that every chapter really starts with this simplified summary that give you a visual look of here's what this disease, where this should present and whether it should be diffuse or, or focal nodules. Um, and then here here are the key features clinically and histologically that are going to help you with making the diagnosis and understanding the disease. Here's another thing I like. Here's a picture of um, malignant, ugly lymphocytes infiltrating the wall of a vessel with you know, angiocentrism. And then a nice um, a visual diagram showing here are the possible differential options, different diagnoses that could pot potentially show angiocentrism. And again, diagrams, I really love the diagram showing here's the difference between intravascular uh, lymphoma versus angiocentric, which is actually in the wall of the vessel. And there's often necrosis involved in those things because of kind of infarction. And then um, a, a table showing uh, if EBV is positive and you have angiocentrism, or if it's negative and you have angiocentrism, here are the different processes you can think about. Um, again, more and more lists and tables, and I really like the tables because they go through all the things you should think of, kind of like a mental checklist. Here are things that often have Epstein-Barr virus. Um, here are times when you should check Epstein-Barr virus. I really think that that's so practical. And to me, that's again, one of the things I, lo I love so much about this book is the practical, pragmatic nature of it. It's easy to list a bunch of diseases and show some pictures and say, it's positive for this stain, this stain, this stain, and here's what it looks like and here's how it behaves next disease. But what really I find that I need and want is a book that tells me, here's how to approach these things. Here's what you need to do and when you need to do it in real life practice. And I think that that sometimes is very challenging to write a book that way and get that message across. But um, Antonio Subtil has done this with flying colors because it's really perfect to see here are the times, you know, if you see any of these things or in this history, you should think about checking an Epstein-Barr virus by ish.
the book obviously covers mycosis fungoides in great detail because it's such an important and common uh, lymphoma for us to see in dermatopathology. And that there's is another example of a really nice side-by-side -side diagram with uh, pictures and the um, the uh, artwork diagrams that show here spongiotic dermatitis where spongiosis is a lot more than the amount of intrapidermal lymphocytes whereas in mycosis fungoides it's the opposite you have a lot more lymphocytes than you would expect for the degree of spongiosis and it's just a great visual way to show this and get that concept across um, and uh, then there's again another table here are things you should think of when you see intrapidermal lymphocytes mycosis fungoides sure but there are a variety of other lymphoproliferative things that can have intraepidermal lymphocytes and there are also benign dermatoses quite a few of them that can mimic mycosis fungoides by having um, intrapidermal lymphocytes so again these tables are really um, very detailed and give quite a few entities and really um, really try to be very uh, thorough i think and i feel like that's a very useful um, useful aspect of the tables in this book is they're not just uh, there for filler they are very valuable and they really contain a lot of things that uh, that will make you aware of of other entities you should consider in your differential um, and here's an example of some of the writing. Uh, the writing style is fantastic. I really like it because it's very straightforward, it's easy to read, kind of conversational, and, and again, very practical. You know, large cell transformation of mycosis fungoides requires at least 25% of large atypical cells in the infiltrate or the formation of microscopic nodules of large cells. It's important to emphasize that the definition of large cell transformation of MF is based on H&E findings, not on the level of CD30 expression. Um, and then down at the bottom, anaplastic large cell lymphoma is not a diagnostic option in this setting since absence of MF is part of the diagnostic criteria for cutaneous ALCL. These are things that I see people get confused about all the time, and I love it because it's like every single thing that is commonly mistaken, I feel like uh, Dr. Subtil hits on that in the book and says, don't make this mistake, don't make this mistake. Make sure that you know that if you have this, there's no way it can be that. And um, again, it's really great to have that level of detail and have the book focusing on the practical needs of practicing dermatopathologists. Um, here are some other figures showing the difference between diffuse large B cell lymphoma versus cutaneous follicle center uh, lymphoma and showing what types of um, cytomorphology the lymphocytes have in those two diseases uh, with diagrams to help highlight that for memory. Here's CLL, SLL involving the skin and showing that it's composed of not only small lymphocytes but also pro-lymphocytes and para-immunoblasts. All of these words that I, I found very confusing as a trainee and still uh, some of them find confusing um, as a, uh, a practicing derm path, uh, it really goes into detail explaining this is what these words mean and what the cells look like. And I think that's great. Sometimes books uh, I seem to use words and don't really explain exactly what's meant by them. And only years later, uh, someone explains it in a way where I'm like, oh, that's what that word means. I, I recognize it, but I never really knew how to explain it. And I think that takes really a master teacher to be able to, to break down uh, these things into simple parts uh, that are very easily understood and conceptualized. Here's another um, example of the pearls and pitfalls uh, boxes. And I again, I really love these. Um, this is the one in the, the mycosis fungoides chapter. Epidermotropism is a key for MF, but too much epidermotropism would actually be pretty unusual and should make you think of other things like lymphomatoid papulosis type D or pagetoid reticulosis. Um, Cesare and MF are closely related, but they're actually distinct entities. And sometimes MF patients will become erythrodermic, but Cesare patients are erythrodermic from the start. Uh, here's more from the same table that tumor stage MF often lacks epidermotropism. I find that uh, trainees and, and uh, practicing pathologists sometimes get confused about this um, and uh, that if you see uh, ulceration that's actually also abnormal and not usually seen in MF unless it's in tumor stage and you can uh, pause the video and read um, more here but I, this is not just a, a few hand-picked things the entire book is filled with stuff like this it was really hard for me as you can tell from how long this video it is it was really hard for me to narrow it down to just a few examples
examples. So I um, asked Dr. Subtil to just send me a whole bunch of different ones that I thought were, were great uh, because the, the whole book is just filled with this. It's incredibly practical and detailed. So uh, I hope this has given you uh, a pretty good look at what this book is like. And if you thought any of this stuff was exciting, then you should definitely buy this book. And I think you'll be very, very happy with it. Um, I'm going to leave links down in the video description for where you can purchase this book. And again, I wasn't paid anything to make this review. Um, I just thought the book was so great that I was more than happy uh, to give a review of it. So thanks very much for watching. And thanks again, Dr. Subtil, for taking the, the incredible time that it must have taken to put together such a wonderful book. I think it's going to be helpful to so many pathologists and uh, most importantly, to our patients.